Hi, I'm Simone. And I'm Katie. And, and welcome, welcome to, to The Transcript. Transcript. This week, The Transcript sits down with two students with contrasting political views, talks to the new librarian, and covers the girls' ice hockey teams. A federal judge in Hawaii on Wednesday blocked President Trump's revised temporary ban on travel to the U.S. from six predominantly Muslim countries. The judge, Derek K. Watson, a federal district court in Honolulu, wrote that a reasonable, objective observer would interpret Trump's executive order as an attempt to disfavor a particular religion in spite of its stated religiously neutral purpose. Trump vowed to appeal Watson's decision. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutt declared victory over far-right anti-Muslim firebrand Geert Wilders on Wednesday in parliamentary elections that were seen as the first test of populist movements in Western Europe this year. Wilders led opinion polls for months before tumbling in recent weeks. The vote was seen as a bellwether for upcoming elections in France and Germany, where other anti-immigrant candidates are challenging the political establishment. The first round of the NCAA men's basketball tournaments kicks off Thursday with 16 games at four different sites across the country. Number 5 Notre Dame and number 12 Princeton kick things off just after noon with the Fighting Irish narrowly escaping upset with a 60-58 victory, while a contest between number 5 Iowa and number 12 Nevada will close out the opening day. All right. Welcome to Speak of the Devil, a monthly talk show that aims to bridge the gap between opposing or differing sides on a certain topic. I'm Nell Sanders, your host and moderator, and this week we are diving into politics at NHS with my two guests, Drew Clock and J.D. Pruitt. Um, do you guys want to introduce yourself? Drew, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, my name is Drew Clock. I'm a conservative Republican. I got into politics from my uncle. I mainly follow Paul Joseph Watson of InfoWars and Mark Dice. Uh, he's sometimes on Fox News, uh, Gavin McInnes, those guys. Yeah, uh, my name is JD, I'm a sophomore. Um, I would consider myself, if I could vote, to be a liberal Democrat with the recent election and you know all the, the news leading up to the election. I think it really interested me and was an interesting outlet that I had never had before. Yeah, so you guys are both teens and we're all high schoolers. Um, do you guys think teens can make a, a difference or a change with politics? Oh, definitely, yeah. If you're a teen trying to have a normal conversation with another teen like we're having right now, you might reconsider some things. You might be like, oh, maybe this, maybe that. Like, we're still at a young learning age. It's important to know that type of stuff. You go to a, any kind of political meeting, town hall, a organizational meeting, whatever it might be, and you, as a high school or walk into the room and all eyes turn on you you have this kind of like young people card mm -hmm. like you said I am the next voter I am the next generation so you guys should listen to what I have to say because mm -hmm. I'm gonna be the one inheriting the country from you so um, a topic that is interesting to me is the divide in our country what do you guys think about that there's sort of a hate between the mm -hmm. two parties that hasn't been in a couple in many years and so now it's not so much just issues that you disagree on it's literally just the fact that i'm a democrat you're a yeah. conservative so therefore i have to hate you and mm -hmm. i don't agree with that i think we need to be issue and solution based not party oriented when trump started running that's when it changed because once trump started winning people thought hey if you're a conservative you're going to be like in trump i hate you like i hate trump i hate you basically so sort of transcending from the topic of hate and moving on to more of the topic of mending, um, what do you guys think about how, I mean, our country is sort of going to mend ourselves after this extremely hateful, dividing election? We need to have like non-hated candidates like Bush and Gore. Like people didn't hate those people. Mm -hmm. They were just two candidates with views, really. It wasn't the biggest controversy in the world. Something I've heard a lot of uh, local liberal representatives talk about is is understanding that your audience is very different mm -hmm. and most people want the same things we just go about it in a different way so for example maybe you have a conservative who doesn't care about climate change and instead of attacking them for that and being like how do you not care about the polar bears you say <laughs> okay what do you care about oh you care about jobs the economy mm -hmm. money okay I can respect that so then you offer them the solution of well you know clean energy is the new it's the new um, economic boom and mm -hmm. you don't even have to mention the word environment all right well this is all the time that we have for today again this was speak of the devil I'm Nell Sanders this is Drew Clock and JD Pruitt thank you so much my name is Carissa Fabin I'm the new librarian here I started uh, 
right after the December break. This library, I when I first started the first week I was here, um, I just really wanted to make it a little more inviting. I had a lot of donations to make a, a maker space, which is kind of a place where kids just can get creative and play games and relax a little. We have some Chromebooks that we just got and some headphones, a lot of new books. Technology has really taken over. So now it's more about um, community and the students and helping them um, facilitating you know what they need with that um, great wonderful you know reward of all this new technology and all these new things that are going on um, is a lot of responsibilities a lot of um, things that students don't really think about um, that we really need to as teachers help guide you through it's, it's a whole different world I want to engage the students more in the library I want them to come and check out more books. I want them to come and utilize the space. I've had some students come in and say they've never been in here before, which amazes me, um, you know, and they're not freshmen. But so I, I really want you to come in and utilize the space and be comfortable here and know that it's here for you and I'm here for you. And I really just want to help prepare you for the next chapter in your lives um, and, you know, whatever that may be. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Hi, I'm Connor McClendon and welcome to Hamped Up. This week, I spoke with NHS senior Lauren Munster and NHS sophomore Bridget Guller Slow about playing for the Longmeadow girls ice hockey team which made it all the way to the state quarterfinals this season. So last year you were playing on a boys team at East Hampton, this year you're playing on a girls team at Longmeadow. What was that transition like for you? Um, definitely an interesting transition because of like the def different relationships you develop with like different people. Um, like last year was like we were always like really separated from the different like locker rooms and stuff and now we're like all together as one team is it's like you know girls coming together and stuff. Um, so I would say it's like a much easier like you like much easier to make relationships or like especially like when we're all together all the time. I mean, I think the biggest difference for me was obviously my position change. I mean, I've always loved to play goalie, and playing goalie for East Hampton was a blast. Um, I even actually am playing goalie on the JV team for Longmeadow now, too. But I think, like, comparing playing goalie for East Hampton to skating out for Longmeadow, I felt a lot more comfortable skating out for Longmeadow. And, I mean, it was just a great year. Do you wish that there was a Northampton team, or do you like being on a team that has students from a bunch of different schools? I definitely like having like a lot of different schools because I feel like it makes us bond more. Like especially like going to like like bus rides or something, or like just like being in the locker room. It forces you to talk about stuff other than school, and it like makes you like form relationships quicker. I think. I mean, it really doesn't matter as soon as you get on the ice because you're all trying to work for the same goal. You all just want to try and do your best and win the game. So it doesn't really matter where you're from at that point. So you have to travel to Springfield for practices, you have to travel all over the state for games. Does that ever get uh, difficult, uh, balancing schoolwork and travel for games? It's definitely time consuming, but um, like definitely the bus rides we use like to times, like sometimes do homework, sometimes we do like other things like, you know, like listen to music or whatever, but it always is like, makes us bond more, I guess, like as I said before. You have to try and figure out how to balance your schoolwork and your sports, and sometimes you do have to miss a practice here and there, but the coaches are great and will understand that no matter what. So you guys are now in the state quarterfinals and you came in as the number 12 seed so that's a pretty impressive run do you guys like being the underdog um i would say so but also you have to take into consideration that like being the underdog you can always like upset someone but always someone can always also upset you like recently we had like a the 24th seed or whatever like upset the number five seed or something like that so it's like very you always have to like be on your toes and like be ready for like the next game ahead all right great thanks so much for being on hamped up Congratulations to Nick Smith, Patrick Quinlan, Cola Valley, and Ben Gordon Sniffen, who achieved All-American status at Nationals in New York this past weekend after their relay team finished sixth in their event. Make sure to come see this year's musical, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Performances run tonight at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Also, make sure to like the transcript on Facebook and follow them on Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm.